Your Excellency David Holly, High Commissioner for Australia in Sri Lanka, Mr. Ishmael Mohammed Bakri, Minister Consular of the High Commission for Malaysia in Sri Lanka, Dean of UCL, Dr. Kulkarni, Director UCL, Dr. Harsha Alice, CEO, Mr. Gihan Silva, faculty of uh, UCL, parents, well-wishers, and graduates. It's indeed an honor and privilege to have been invited here to share a few words and thoughts with you on the occasion of this exciting and momentous day in your academic career. Thank you for sharing with me over the past few minutes, handshakes which were warm, some handshakes which were very cold, some sweaty, some a little nervous, but that is your individuality. How today you have accepted the excitement, accepted the challenge of a new phase of your life. There is no right answer on how you face the future. But there is just one direction which I think we all need to take at each point in our careers. Our careers are punctuated by success, hopefully most of the time. They're uh, punctuated by failure sometimes, punctuated by celebratory occasions such as this one, punctuated by anxiety, punctuated by uncertainty. And we move through these phases as we would move through the pages of a book. The emotions that are generated along the way of reading your own story, you will cherish in many years to come. So I always wonder why uh, I'm sometimes invited uh, to speak at graduation ceremonies. I'm not an academic. The first chance I got of escaping from academia, I did it. Got my PhD and I was on a flight a few weeks later and employed in business just a few days after I returned to Sri Lanka. Dr. Alice has extended this honor today, and I'm thankful for that. And I must say that I'm always privileged, and it gives me great pleasure to share some thoughts on the occasion that youngsters, future leaders of this country, set forth on a new chapter. I also wonder whether I'm invited to speak in order to give you all that much deserved break with your mobile phone so that you could reach out for it and connect to someone somewhere, if nothing else, the internet. That's an invitation to do that. I don't consider it rude, and I consider it a part of our lives now. It has become a part of our lives to connect. It has been a part of our lives to share, and it has been a part of our lives to be in many places at the same time. And this is one of the most fundamental changes that I think technology has delivered to us. And as you move forward in your career, some of you will go overseas right away, some of you will go overseas in a year or two, you will see that there's one constant around you, and that is change. You might ask me, so what's different, what's unique about change? Things have changed from the time of the, from the, time of the Stone Age. But what has changed really is the speed of change. And today, uh, we are at a point in the evolution of humanity where the speed of change is exponential. And therefore, 
you would have heard this term. They say that we live in exponential times. Exponential times are where the speed of change for those who have done mathematics, and many of, many of you are, I think, maths-based uh, graduates today. Exponential is a curve of change which is you know, like a skyrocket. So what does this mean for you? It can be disconcerting, and therefore I don't want to dwell too much on it. But the fact that emanates from the, this exponential speed of change is that what you have learned will become obsolete very, very soon. What you will learn when you move to the next phase of your career in university in Malaysia or in uh, Australia, that too will become obsolete faster and faster. What I learned as a graduate many light years ago, or even what I imbibed through my postgraduate studies, completely obsolete. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Not to depress you, but just to point to the fact that what you learn from your advanced studies goes way beyond what you learn from that textbook, what you learn from the courseware. What you have learned is to work with other people. And while the speed of change is driving core knowledge or basic knowledge into obsolescence faster and faster and faster, and the knowledge that you need becomes more and more new, the constant of humanity and the constant of the importance of linking between human beings is increasing. While 25 years ago it might have been possible to live as an island, to amass knowledge, to be the world's best in something, and to build your value that way, I sincerely believe that in today's era, due to exponential change, that is less and less possible. What is more possible today, and what is a fact that we all need to understand and believe, it is that it is the ecosystems that we are a part of. In business, ecosystems would mean peer companies, partners, service providers, connections overseas. In simple human terms, it means that the collective or the collection of a number of human beings contributing their individual skills, their capabilities, their differences, will always be much greater than the individual alone. And I believe that that is what you learn in university. The ability to appreciate diversity, to appreciate the differences in human beings, the differences amongst you, your colleagues, amongst your friends, and to celebrate those differences, and to be able to bring together those differences, capabilities, weaknesses, strengths, aspirations, all together so that as a community, you will be very valuable. And this truth, I believe, having been in technology the last 25 years, and in one of the fastest changing spheres of technology, that being connectivity, and in particular, around broadband and mobile telecommunications and 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G, the Gs become, uh, come, come at us faster and faster, that the reality and the end game in our lives as worthwhile human beings is the ability to bring together the strengths of multiple people and to value that. At some point, you will disperse like peas from a pod and go your own separate ways. You will not, maybe, be all together forever and ever, obviously. But as you move out like peas from a pod, you will form new communities. 
new ecosystems. And it's those who are able to create those new ecosystems, new groupings, which are productive, positive, and take forward whatever organization, institution, society, alumni, whatever you may call it, to take those institutions forward, those will be the winners and leaders. I spoke of uncertainty a little earlier, and I guess in our country today, we face a lot of uncertainty. Now, there are two approaches to uncertainty. One is to attempt to create certainty. And you will find that many of the great leaders in this world, great leaders of business, leaders of families, leaders of fraternities, have that capability to create certainty out of uncertainty. Here you are present and together with you are your parents. I'm sure that in 99 out of 100 instances, your parents would have given you complete certainty at home. The world outside when you were kids would have been even more uncertain or at least equally uncertain as it seems today. But did you even know that there was uncertainty? Did you know there was a word such as uncertainty? No, because the leadership of your family, the leadership of your home, that's your parents, provided you that certainty. They faced the uncertainty and created certainty for you. Now, as you step out, you will begin to face that uncertainty. And the natural inclination in any of us is to drift towards the easy way out of uncertainty. It is to run further and further away from uncertainty into the comfort of certainty. But what I would challenge you with as you step out into the world is to embrace uncertainty. Embrace the unknown. Be masters of the unknown. Build capability to accept the unknown but find a path through that uncertain environment which is unique to yourself. You take any of the main major disruptors that in the IT world today. What have they done? They have created uncertainty out of legacy, out of legacy assumptions. They have created an uncertain environment. They disrupt it, and then they find a way through that uncertain environment, which is known only to themselves. And they are the great disruptors. I'm not saying for a moment that every one of us needs to be a disruptor. But I believe that in these fast-changing times, we should not gravitate towards the certain. Because the times are changing so fast, there's no certainty. We must gravitate towards embracing the uncertainty and becoming champions of winning on the backdrop of that uncertainty. Which brings me to, the, to one thing which is certain, and that is the individual in you. All of you have been studying together. You feel a team. You feel very excited today that together you have made this achievement. And that's fantastic. That spirit of teamwork, that spirit of the ecosystem, that spirit of collective victory. But while you celebrate that, also think of what's inside you. Each of you has something very, very unique. Think of what that is. You might have one characteristic, two, three. Some of us are so blessed that you might have many, many unique characteristics. One, be proud of your uniqueness. Second, Never be afraid of demonstrating and displaying that uniqueness in you. 
because this world needs unique people. And the more you foster what is unique in you as you go through these exponential times, you will remain anchored on some fundamentals. And I would challenge you that within this room, one unique fundamental is the Sri Lankan in you. I know we are all proud of being Sri Lankan, but beyond being proud, I think there is a nexus of culture, of values, of innate humility, innate determination, innate love for people around you that is truly Sri Lankan. It's sometimes called hospitality. It's sometimes called tradition. It's called Buddhism. It's called one or the other of all the religions practiced in this country. But there's that unique Sri Lankan gem in all of you. So while you go out into the world, I think that gem in you must radiate and continue to radiate. Even if you're not living in this country, that you retain that uniqueness, combined with all your other individual unique char characteristics. I sincerely believe that is one thing you will never regret. And when you have the fortune and the pathway to come back to this country, and I would strongly encourage you to do that. And that, by the way, is the second reason I think I'm invited for occasions like this, because I'm one of those individuals who did come back. First, after my first degree, and then I went out again and came back after my PhD. And I have never regretted one single day since I made that decision. So I, I can recommend that highly to everyone here. One, because we need to build world-class talent. We need to build world-class institutions in this country. We will never be anything other than Sri Lanka, wherever we live. And surely, we want to look back and see that our country has progressed not just in wealth or prosperity, but in terms of the quality, the depth of intellect, the depth of capability of the Sri Lankan people. And you are the next generation of leaders. You are the next generation of talent. You are the generation which will make or break the next phase of this country's advancement. So it's a responsibility that you have to dream. I'm not saying there's a responsibility to come back in one year or three years or five years or 10 years. But I think there's a responsibility to dream and have a vision that the country you were born in and the country that will always be your country will be the best in the world. Dr. Alas has been one of those unique Sri Lankans who has always had the vision of building world-class institutions in Sri Lanka, and UCL is one such. He has the wisdom to bring together a great faculty, it's on stage here today, world-class in their own right. He has the wisdom to link to academic institutions in which are the best in the world, and he has the wisdom to bring together this great community of Sri Lankan students to experience and build their own pathways into a future which is also world class. But I think we all owe this country, especially at this time when we all wonder how we can build certainty for this country, how we can build this country to a level which is the best in this region, which should be growing faster than others. 
and we all owe to contribute our vision and contribute our determination to that forward path. Having a degree will separate you from many others. So does that mean that you're something special? Does that mean that you're exclusive? My request to you is to not to think that way. You have had the good fortune given to you by birth, your skills, capability, divine intervention, which has brought you opportunity, parents who have given you stability and certainty, a great faculty which has imparted knowledge, and an exciting future. You're very fortunate. Use that good fortune to inspire others to be, of, to be the best. Inspire others to do better. Don't use this to separate yourself from the ecosystem, to separate yourself from society. Call yourself special. Use this as a beacon that others can follow, not only due to your academic success or brilliance, but for the human beings that you are. And I think the faculty, directorate of this institution will be always more proud to see you as great Sri Lankan human beings who other Sri Lankans can follow rather than see you being the most successful people in this world, but having lost the fundamentals of humility and love for everyone around you. So I wish you all the very best. Very proud to be here. And I congratulate parents and you. And last but not least, the entire faculty. I think it's a as proud a moment for all of you as it is for these young graduates. All the best. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Vijay Surya, for your most enlightening and inspiring talk. We would now like to present our distinguished invitee, keynote speaker, Corporate Executive Vice President and Regional Chief Executive South Asia at Asiata Group and Chairman, Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, Dr. Hans Vijay Surya, with a token of appreciation from UCL for gracing this event with his presence. We invite Dr. Alas to present this token gift. <laughs> 